Zoom is yours. Hello, everybody. Um, it's nice to see everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Lindsay Northup Moore, and I'm the Senior Director for Disability Support here at American University. And I'm joined by my colleague, Nicole. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Nowinski. I'm the Associate Director of Disability Support on our team. And I just want to make sure, can everybody, can we see the screen um, with our slides, Lindsay? Great. Yeah, looks good. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, we are we're gonna go through our agenda today. I just want to you know just start off by saying first um, welcome and please don't hesitate to jump in with questions during um, our presentation. But we also will um, have hopefully plenty of time at the end to answer any um, questions as well. Um, and just putting it out there just to begin with, we are always here to support you as well as our students. So if you have any questions during any time while you're here at AU with, with, with regards to accommodations with the students, please reach out to us because we really um, want to be here for a resource for faculty just as much as we are for students. So yeah, anyway, so introductions, we've done that. Um, the agenda today, we're gonna do accommodation registration and faculty notification, how you guys are gonna find out about accommodations, um, some information about accommodation implementation, um, there's a lot to cover under there, but we're going to do what we think is most relevant for you. Um, and then some course material accessibility tips um, and some general course guidance um, that we like to see and then wrap up in Q&A. Um, so, yeah. All right, we will move on. So any student who needs a disability related accommodations um, the, the way that they notify the university that they need that is by going through our office. And that's a legal mandate. So that, and that's the, the way that the university has decided and most universities um, do this. And so students come to us, they go through a three-step registration process. And that process includes them providing their self-report, includes them providing clinical documentation from a provider that they're working with. And then it also, um, and they also, the third step of the process is them meeting with a professional staff member in our office. So we meet individually with every single student that registers with our office and we talk to them and usually we meet with them um, more than once um, and to, to make sure that they're getting what they need throughout their time here at AU. Um, during that process is when they are approved for accommodations. And if they are approved for academic accommodations, they then receive an accommodation memo. And this is an electronic document, and sometimes students print it out, sometimes they um, don't, and sometimes they email it. Um, but it, it, it is very official. It has our name on it, ASAC. It has information about the accommodations that they're approved for, and it also provides you some information on how to implement those accommodations. Um, and so once they're approved for those accommodations, they get the memo. And then it's their job to take that memo and provide it to you as the faculty member, um, as the official notification that they need accommodations in your class. Um, and some students, it's, it's up to each student whether they want to provide that memo or not, but if they want the accommodations, they do need to provide you that memo. And so that gives you the, the notification that you need to implement their accommodations. Um, then once you receive that memo, we always guide the students and we guide you as well to have a conversation with that student to talk about it and to talk about what is on that memo and how those accommodations will work in your class. Um, things work, every class is different. And so accommodations look different in every class. Um, sometimes it's as simple as extended time on exams. And sometimes it's very nuanced where it's, you know, sometimes a student might need some flexibility with regards to um, uh, deadlines. And so that can be a, a much bigger discussion. And, um, and so that's why we always, uh, we always guide everyone to have this conversation ahead of time and to talk about the memo. Um, it's really important to also know that faculty should not provide accommodations to students without the memo. Um, if a student comes to you and says, hi, I need extended time on exams, and you say, hey, well, where's that accommodation memo um, from the ASAC, and they say, I don't have one, then we ask that you don't provide them extended time on the exam, unless, I will say there's a caveat to this, unless you provide it to any student. 
If any student would come to you and say, you know, I need extra time on, on my exam um, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what it is, and you would give that to any student, great, go for it. But if the student is asking you to do something that you wouldn't normally do for any student for some kind of disability medical reason, you, are, you do need that information from our office um, or from the Dean of Students if, there, if there's like that acute temporary thing going on. Um, the other really important thing to know about accommodations is they don't work retroactively. So, you know, you may have a student who doesn't give you any information for three quarters of the semester and then all of a sudden says, oh, hey, I'm actually registered with the ASAC and I need extended time on my exam and I didn't get my extended time on the last three exams, so I want to retake those exams. No, that, that's not how it works. Um, so what the notification is, as soon as you get that memo, then anything going forward, it doesn't go backward, okay? Um, our students know that, and we talk to them about that extensively, but sometimes those things arise. So we want to make sure we notify you as well that you don't have to do anything retroactively. Okay. Um, now, implementing accommodations. The thing that I wanted to talk most about here is the accommodation of, oh, I, you know what, Nicole, I think it didn't, we updated this a little bit, but it didn't save, um, that's okay. Um, so the, the most common accommodation that we have for our students is extended time on exams. That's the most common academic um, one. And so the way, and we, can, we, we will proctor all those exams in our office. Um, you're also welcome to do that, but we offer that as a service. So whenever we have extended a student who has extended time on their exam or any other exam accommodation, they are, oh yeah, we did lose the screen, Nicole. I was fixing the slide. I'll be, it'll be back in one sec. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Um, we will um, allow that student to take it with us and then you don't have to proctor it, okay? Um, oh, we have a question. Are we required to remind students that they can reach out to that? Um, you, you should, if a student is saying they have some disability related need, um, you should point them in our direction. Say, you know, this is the official way to notify the university that you need accommodations. And so you should point them in our direction. Thank you for that question, Tom. Um, okay, Nicole, you... Sorry about that, guys. We had we were having a I don't know if you guys had the we had the duo issue yesterday and now we were having a um there we go. a Microsoft Sorry about that. Thanks today. for yeah, <laughs> it should be right now. Great. Okay, so if a student has extended time or any kind of exam accommodations, they can take it with our office. Um, the way that they do that is they we have a portal that they go on and they request to take their exams with our office. And when, once they do that, you are notified as a faculty member via email that the student has requested to take whatever um, exam you've scheduled with our office. Um, and then in that email, it provides a whole bunch of information of how to get us the exam so that we can administer it properly um, for the student. So we ask that professors provide the exam at least three business days ahead of time into our office, um, the exam and the instructions for the exam. This is very important because we wanna make sure that we are, we are giving the student the exam in the same way that you would get, that you're giving the general class the exam. Um, and so we need all of that information. We also need it ahead of time because we prepare things ahead of time. Um, we administer hundreds of exam exams every day to students. And they're all different, all different professors, all different students, all different accommodations. And so we need things ahead of time to make sure that we're doing it right. And also to make sure that when that student shows up to our office, they, the exam is ready and they can sit down and take it. There's nothing worse than the student showing up and we don't have the exam, we don't have the instructions for the exam. And then that student gets even more anxious about their exam and it, it snowballs from there. So having everything ahead of time is so important for us and for the students and for you to make sure that we're doing it all correctly. Um, there's, uh, you know, for hard copy exams, you can upload those into our um, portal 
we will make sure that it's either printed out or provided um, electronically, whatever makes the most sense and whatever, however, whatever modality that you want it provided in with, with, along with students' accommodation, some students have an accommodation to, they've used technology and they need to take it on their computer and we have to format it specifically for that. Um, another reason we needed ahead of time to make sure it's formatted correctly for students. For Canvas exams, we still need that information from you. We still need the information about how the exam is being administered. And there's a place in our portal that you will be guided to um, once the student requests to put that in there. We do have the ability um, now, we, this is new, we do have the ability to go into Canvas and find that exam and make sure that it's all, um, it's all uploaded and, well, it's already uploaded, but it's already um, extended time and accommodations have been applied um, to that exam. So we can go into Canvas and do that now, which is great. It's really helping our students a lot um, to make sure that the exam is open and the extended time is there. Um, and so, yes, we proctor thousands of exams each year. And so collaboration with you is super, super important. Um, and so we really look forward to working with you. Lindsay, can I add one thing about Canvas? Um, yeah. The other thing that sometimes gets left off that really impacts our operation is if there's a password for your Canvas exam, um, which is which is great. Um, and just making sure that that's provided to us um, along with the exam instruction so we can give that to the student. So, so true. Um, if you are, and these are for in-class assessments. So whether they're online or hard copy, as long as, if the students are taking it in class, this is the process. Um, if you are giving students an exam and they can take it anywhere at any time, it's unproctored, then it's your responsibility to make sure that the students' accommodations are applied. If you have questions about it, we can absolutely help with those and help you figure that out. Um, but we won't, we, we don't need to proctor that exam in our office. The students, if any student can take it anywhere, then the student who has accommodations can take it anywhere. Um, we often get that question. Um, so yeah. And then, so that, that's like the big accommodation that um, probably most of you will work with at some point, the extended time. There's many other accommodations that we have, and we're always happy to talk about those and how it can work in your class. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some course material accessibility and some things for you to think about. Um, if you haven't um, already thought about this um, over the next few days, you know, before the semester begins, um, but some basic accessibility needs that, you know, are very beneficial to our students in our office, but, uh, you know, universally designed and beneficial to a lot of people, um, most importantly, captioning your videos. So any, um, you know, any media that you have um, uh, that's visual, um, making sure that there's captions um, that help. I mean, I watch things on Netflix or wherever all the time with captions, um, but that helps students that are um, hard of hearing or deaf um, or English is their second language uh, or, you know, to, to follow along. Um, ensuring images have alt text. Um, if you're not familiar with this, um, there's screen reading softwares um, for a variety of reasons that will hover over images and, um, you know, the, that alt, uh, alt text will describe, um, you know, what's in the image. Um, so you don't have to get super technical, but if it's, you know, a woman riding a bike, you can literally like ride, write woman riding a bike. So, um, you know, just something to describe what's on the screen. Excuse me. Um, consider um, colors that you're using. Um, so again, um, if people are viewing um, uh, PowerPoint, you know, just what's the best in terms of display and um, and and um, for certain um, eye conditions um, or uh, tracking um, tracking along on on information. Um, and then within documents, following accessibility guidelines. So using headers, embedding links, um, bullet points for people following along. Um, some additional um, tips for um, audio or vis video accessibility. Um, make If you have a script um, of what um, is in the video, um, that is super easy to then translate um, um, to use as a captioning guide. 
Um, so for a lot of our film classes or, um, you know, if you're making films and you have a script, you can use that for, for um, captioning. Um, you can also use automatic captions, but just remember that they're not perfect and they're not, um, you know, there often are a lot of errors. Um, so going back and watching and listening and making sure that the captions that were automatically generated are accurate. Lindsay, anything to add on this slide? No, I don't think so. Cool. Um, and other um, general course guidance. So um, we encourage outlining in your syllabus course expectations, including class attendance, participation, and other requirements. Um, this is super helpful. Like Lindsay said before, we have some students who um, have certain accommodations that may, um, you know, they may speak to you about um, attendance or deadlines. Um, so having those expectations from the get-go can really help frame that the student's conversation with you about what they might need in your course. Um, and also for students without those accommodations, um, you know, our, our population of students with disabilities, like more information is better so that they can know, you know, the, the expectations of your course. Um, notifying all students in your course of what is permitted for assessments. This is so helpful. So are they allowed to use a calculator? Um, is everybody allowed to use a formula sheet or is everybody allowed an index card um, to write whatever they want on it for your test? Um, that is helpful in advance um, to, to know so students can prepare. Um, and then providing multiple assessment modality or options. Um, this is not um, feasible in every single class, but um, thinking through, you know, um, can I offer a paper? Can I offer a sit down test or presentation? Um, you know, whatever it might be, what are the different options that students could take um, to show, um, you know, that they've mastered the content in your course? The last thing we'll say is make use of academic alerts. I'm sure you've heard this already, um, but this is super helpful for our population of students, especially just to know where they're at in your course, if it's possible um, to, to know that, um, hey, maybe um, I'm not doing as well as I thought I was doing so far, let me talk to the professor about this. Um, so we, we certainly encourage that. Um, and yeah, I think that that's our content. We have um, a couple minutes left if there's any questions that we can try to answer. Yeah, Brad? Go ahead, you feel free to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Lindsay and Nicole, you guys do a fantastic job and I'm just chiming in again. Um, I just want everybody to understand that accommodations are such a critical part of teaching at American University to make sure that we're aware of them at this point in time. And that's a very important uh, part of our operation. What we also have at American is we have a disability student union and we have a disability legal clinic at the Washington College of Law. So we are very focused to make sure that accommodations get um, the proper look that need to get from all of our professors. And I have found over time, starting teaching in the 80s, that people are, students are more comfortable asking for help on uh, accommodations. So I see more uh, disability accommodation forms from you all that I used to see years ago. And I see that more students are comfortable talking about their disabilities. And, the, and the, our responsibility is to make sure that we um, understand and are accessible to those disabilities. So thank you guys very much for all of your efforts. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. We always appreciate your collaboration as well. And yes, we have had a, a, a just, just speaking to what Rob said, we've had a, a major rise in students registering with our office, which is a good yeah. thing. We're glad that the students are coming to us. And we also, um, are, and in the past, I would say five years since we've been here, we've gone up at least um, 30%. Um, we have a lot of new students coming out with mental health diagnoses and chronic health conditions. And so it's something that we absolutely want to all be aware of. Thank you so much. Um, Craig. Uh, thank you. Just a, a quick question for you. Um, one of the assessment exercises in my courses have historically taken the form of a final blue book examination, a handwritten exam. I don't know if you call them blue books at AU, they're yeah. different colors. But um, I was talking to someone the other day who mentioned that um, handwriting can often be a problem for students. Um, 
And I'm curious whether you would advise dropping entirely a handwritten exercise um, and or switching over to computers. I, I have a feeling it's the case that uh, CTRL might even offer computer space for students to take exams on. Um, and, and this is somewhat uh, sort of adjacent to whether they have a disability or not. So um, I guess I'm asking, should I drop um, the handwritten exercises? Um, I would say, could you offer both options? Some students might prefer to handwrite and some students might prefer to type. Um, I will say when we have some, we do have a lot of students who have an accommodation to use a computer for their assessments. And so in that case, um, those students are always using a computer, whether or not you've scheduled it to be a blue book exam or not. We have had some, and, and I will say sometimes it, if the professor really wants it in a blue book, we will have the student, <laughs> we will have the student type it out and then we will have somebody else transcribe it into a blue book, which is pretty laborsome. Um, so I would say if you can uh, give students the option, I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. helpful. I just have a very quick follow up on that, which is I had thought of offering uh, an option for everybody. I guess my concern is um, one of equity. I, I don't know about you. But I can type faster than I can write. Um, and I suspect that I could provide a more full answer to a question if I were typing rather than handwriting. So that was my concern about whether or not um, the option might, in fact, favor those who take it. Um, that I, I don't know if anyone else on the call has uh, has any thoughts on that. So we, we're at time to start the next session. Uh, I don't know, Lindsay and Nicole, if you do you want to respond to Craig's comment quickly before we move on. I would just say I think you're being really thoughtful about it, and I, that's what we you know we want and we ask. And so, it, and if you do think that it might provide the a, a, an advantage, but any student could also have that advantage, right? So if they want to type, they could. And some people can get through and be clear and concise and less words than others. So, um, yeah. Thank you. That, that's really helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, Lindsay and Nicole, 